Oh nice, MAPPA has a new battle series this season. Let me check out the mangaka's past works so I know what to expect. Bruh. How did Amahara, the mangaka behind Interspecies Reviewers, go from a manga summarized by the tagline of Gotta smash em all, to a wildly fun underrated battle seinen? I have absolutely no clue where you take that leap, but it blows my mind even more finding out who the artist for Ida 10 is. I don't really know how to say it, but I think it's cool Kyo Shinja, which for those of you who don't know, is the creator of the comedy masterpiece Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. And they aren't just a one-hit wonder either. Four of the series that are airing this season are directly directly tied to them, so there is very clear talent on this project, and it's a gift from God that it was picked up by a gifted studio as well. I'm sure everyone is aware of the quote-unquote MAPPA effect. MAPPA always somehow gets their hands onto popular series and turns them into artistic masterpieces. There's literally countless examples of this result, from Kakeguri's edgy over-the-top art to the off-putting yet beautiful CGI of Doro Hidoro, and it's this very consequence that turned Itadin into the Mona Lisa, if she was badass and about God's mutilation demons. Edaten has such a unique art style that it feels like something far removed from the Moe revolution, but yet still somehow inspired by the vibrance of it. Every shot feels bright enough to keep the series fun, but not bright enough to give you a blistering headache. It's honestly very reminiscent of The Great Pretender if you turn the vibrance up to max. It's extremely hard to express my feelings on this art, and what makes expressing the excellence even more challenging is the fact that every single character has like 70 color palettes. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is the only series I can think of that pulls off this bizarre idea so well. But even in Jojo, most of the series is compromised of the same few colors. Edidin takes this idea and runs with it. Environment change, color change. Presence of threat, color change. And there's so many more examples. And it isn't just used for the sake of it either. It's only used to amplify whatever situation our cast is in. If our characters enter a desolate, snowy place, we're welcome with an icy cold splash. Yet when there's malicious intent in the air, the world is burned alive by warm colors. The color designer Chikako and Kamata is proving they're a master of their craft. Despite the fact they actually don't have a lot of large roles under their belt. Chikako Kamata's most notable work is his color design on Jujutsu Kaisen, as well as his color design on Summer Wars, once again showing how much talent is on this project. But the myriad of colors is not the only exceptional thing about this anime. The animation somehow feels perfectly constructed around the series. Usually I feel like series either feel very fluid all the time, or have an unusually rough edge to them, but Edaten is able to take the best of both worlds and combine it to really exemplify the vibe of every scene. When it's showcasing the godly martial arts, Arts, it's very smooth, displaying their immense skill, but yet it's still able to show the deadly impact of these clashes. These two things combined give every fight the hype of God of High School, while still having an amazing story. Oh yeah, did I not mention this series isn't just brainless dopamine? The overall story is just about the Itaden, battle gods that are summoned to protect humanity from the never-ending rage of demons. It's such a basic start, but the catch is, there is no demons. Actually, 800 years ago, all Itaden except one sealed themselves away along with every last demon. This causes our current generation of Edaten to be extremely ignorant of the very calamity they're meant to prevent. Each character is pretty unique within the context of the story, but maybe not unique overall. Ren is basically your battle-hardened, serious yet anxious master, while Hayato is a workaholic that will do anything to get stronger. Luckily, he lacks the loud, obnoxious stereotype of other similar characters. Paula is your classic newbie character that really can't do much, and honestly, it feels like she's only ever there to be protected. And finally, Yeasley, a terminally online game-addicted shut-in, but somehow due to his immortality, becomes addicted to knowledge on the same level as Senku. The story developments do present themselves quite sparsely, but honestly, that's a positive. Extremely early on, an antagonist is presented, but all info on him and his goals are extremely vague and spaced out, leading to every new drop of info to be extremely engaging. Not to mention, between all of these hints, there are plenty of bloody brawls to keep meatheads entertained. The overall theme of the story thus far seems to be ignorance. As as the deities are ignorant of the very thing they were born to do. See, gods just don't appear randomly. They are born from humanity's cries for salvation, only to do absolutely nothing to save them. It's only when enemies like demons appear that gods step in to protect humanity. The story portrays that in a way that's extremely easy to comprehend, but yet very thought-provoking. It's like how when humans don't care about birds unless the forest is on fire. And at the current time in the anime, it's not quite clear why demons exist, but it feels very obvious that it's a call for gods to act. But in every good story, there is always something to break the theme. Attack on Titan has its theme of freedom, but until much later on in the series, the society seems to be fine with being locked behind the walls. Edaten has this too, and it's in the form of Yeasley. He's a deity that's dedicated his whole life to research. At first, it seems his goals are rather simple, to research why 
why gods exist and how to defeat demons easier. But every time he has any interaction, his motivations get more and more unclear, leading to a lot of tension. And I mean half the time, I don't even understand if this guy's a villain or on the good side. But then like 10 seconds later, he does something that erases that feeling, only for it to come back 10 times stronger in 5 minutes. One of my favorite ways that Itadin builds its world while keeping you wanting more is name dropping a character we know nothing about multiple times. Every character speaks about this mysterious Prontia so mystically that it's hard not to wonder what importance he holds. And finally, when he shows up, it raises even more questions. From possibilities of new powers to what his whole objective is. This series has so many different ways of creating tension, it's hard to ignore. The tension honestly could be a downfall for some people, but when the suspense seems to be all coming up at once, there is always something to break from it. And usually it's in the form of a stunning battle. And just when you think the series couldn't get any better, it gives you probably the best opening of the year. What can I even say about this opening? If you haven't already seen it, I strongly encourage you to look it up after this video. Listen, I've never done drugs before, but I'm assuming this opening is likely what I would see if I was on hallucinogens. Every shot of each character feels like a 30 minute deconstruction piece, and you only get to see them for a few seconds. I can't describe this feeling properly with my limited thinking capability, likely because of just how out there this opening really is. It's one of those openings that is just so bonkers you have to stop and stare. And with every rewatch, it gets more and more mind numbing. But that is not a downfall. And luckily, the opening psychedelic imagery isn't just led to waste in the actual anime. Various villainous acts tend to be shown in such a way that makes you feel like you're hallucinating, using wild imagery that can't really be explained. But this pairs extremely well with this evil behavior, as it shows the mentality you have to be in to do some of these things. Absolutely crazy. One of the coolest other small touches this series has is its flashbacks being represented by a crystallization on the screen. Typically, anime show this by having some sort of blur on the screen edges, or maybe even a white smoke. But I'm glad Mappa went down an experimental route because this edge distortion effect goes so much better with a series like this. It really gives it that extra experimental feel that I really like. And after all of these positive remarks, I'm sure you would expect me to have at least one criticism. But I honestly don't. Sure, the show could have more to say and have a deeper narrative. But for what it's going for, it really doesn't seem necessary. I don't really feel like every show needs to be the next Monster or Evangelion. The biggest shame about this series is that it isn't more popular. Despite having an insane amount of talent poured into this project, it seems that not many people are actually trying it out. On my anime list, only about 75,000 people have it on their list, which isn't bad, but for a series with this quality, it kind of deserves better. And as it currently stands, I think Itadin is easily the best series of this season. Definitely check it out if you haven't. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and like. Comment if there's any other seasonal shows you want me to check out, and I'll see you guys next time.